guys welcome to VOS Red Carpet my name is Jackson Vungani I want to thank you for joining us today on the show as always on Red Carpet we bring you the latest in entertainment news in sports in film and television from around the world and let's begin the show with how Black Lives Matter and television are intersecting with the co-founder of the movement signing a multi-year overall deal with Warner Bros television group Patrice Kulos, who's also an author, will produce original programming on all platforms tailored to black storytelling. The agreement includes scripted and unscripted series, digital content, long-form series, animated and children's programming. She says that as a long-time community organizer and social justice activist, I believe that my work behind the camera will be an extension of the work that I've been doing for the last 20 years. She said in a statement, I look forward to amplifying the talent and voices of other black creatives through my work. And the US presidential election has some black entertainers taking sides with rapper Didi endorsing Democrat Joe Biden and rapper Ice Cube working with President Donald Trump. Didi said that he launched our black party to advance a political agenda that addresses the needs of black people. Making the announcement with Shalaman the God, Didi said that he's backing Biden. Rapper Ice Cube is working with President Trump on a platinum plan, a Republican initiative to help black Americans. Trump campaign senior advisor Katrina Pearson tweeted a thank you to the rapper for his work on the plan. Ice Cube explained on Twitter that his meeting with Trump administration was a way to talk about the contract with black America, his own plan to address racial inequality. horror film Antebellum by Gerald Bush and Christopher Renz is the latest of several black horror films that addresses the issue of race relations in the United States. Filmmakers and critics weigh in on the film and what defines the black horror genre. VOS Penelopoulou has more. Check it out. There she is. Guess what? Daddy is going to get you dressed for school today. In Antebellum, Veronica Henley, played by Janelle Monet, is a self-assured academic and best-selling author who travels across America speaking about women's rights and racial inequality in the United States. They're stuck in the past. We are the future. A loving mother in an upper-class household, she feels secure in her world until all of a sudden she doesn't. Veronica gets kidnapped and transported to a Louisiana plantation recreated as a replica of one from the 1800s. There, along with a large number of other African Americans who have been abducted, she suffers atrocities. She's given a new name and she is forbidden to speak. Antebellum filmmaker Gerard Bush tells VOA that this horror story came to him in an actual nightmare. And it felt like this woman was screaming across dimensions for help that this needed to be told, that I needed to get the truth out. That is the only way I can describe it. Film critic Tim Gordon acknowledges the power that slavery evokes in antebellum and as a theme in the black horror film genre. I thought 12 Years a Slave, which I think is probably the platinum level of, uh, of, of this genre, which tells this story, kind of did an amazing job. But Gordon says black horror should focus more on the African-American experience in a modern setting. Because I don't really think you've got to go far <laughs> to find the horror in, in the culture. You just have to, to be very attentive and be able to articulate it to audiences. Whether it's just the little slice that there's a scene in Antebellum where they go to a restaurant and there's three of them and they try to seat them by the kitchen next to the dirty dishes. Antebellum filmmaker Christopher Renz tells VOA that while his film focuses on slavery, its modern setting gives it a compelling twist. He says Jordan Peele's 2017 horror blockbuster, Get Out, where black people are held captive for medical experiments by white supremacists in today's America, set the stage for Antebellum. I'm not sure if the reception would have been the same 
if, if Get Out had not happened and was not so successful. Tim Gordon says Hollywood's embrace of black horror has helped it expand into streaming series, such as the Emmy-winning Watchmen, a fictional superhero drama based on a graphic novel where in an alternate universe a female vigilante cop takes on white supremacists. And Lovecraft Country, a new HBO TV series that blends superhero, sci-fi, and horror genres set in the Jim Crow era. Anything that Jordan Peele is producing and doing in Lovecraft Country, to me, are the epitomes of what this genre can be. And in both cases, they use just simple race in America and look at it and, and find the horrific elements to that. Even so, film critic James Berardinelli says the topic of slavery remains central to the black film genre. One of the most traumatic experiences uh, for uh, people of color in this country in the last 200 years is slavery and its aftermath. Ultimately, says Berardinelli, like the Holocaust, slavery provides an inexhaustible supply of stories to be told on film. And a bellum filmmaker Christopher Rentz agrees. I think that everyone needs to constantly be reminded, and that's the only way that we will never forget and make sure that it never happens again. So I think there's room for a bunch of different stories. We're ready to tell a bunch of different stories. Penelope Pulu, VOA News, Washington. Now you may recall that two Black Panther stars were making their way to HBO Max for a limited series called Americana. Well, unfortunately, the series is no longer moving forward at HBO Max with Lupita Nyong'o having to exit due to scheduled conflicts caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Nyong'o was scheduled to star in the 10-episode series with Danai Gorira as the showrunner. The series was based on the best-selling novel by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, Oscar winner Nyong'o was set to play a woman born in Nigeria who lives in America and how her journey involves love, heartache and relationship. And speaking of Chimamanda, she's releasing another book and this one on challenges surrounding pregnancy. Zikora, which follows a female Nigerian lawyer based in Washington DC who is left by her lover after learning she's pregnant will be part of Amazon original series. And let's keep it going with women in film with the new realities film project, a platform to amplify messages and celebrate the work of 10 women using smart technology for positive change. The 10 virtual reality films are the result of a merger of Emmy winning director Ava DuVernay's Narrative Change Arts Collective Array, the technology company Lenovo, as well as Girl Up, a UN initiative to make girls leaders the movement for gender equality. There's so much going on, um, and yet our points of view about it from wherever we stand are important to be heard. Uh, the points of view, the perspectives of young women, um, far too often are not a part of those conversations um, in the film industry, Hollywood, um, in politics. You know, my grandmother says, hope ain't nothing without a plan. And, um, and this is hope with the plan, you know? It is saying, you know, put some architecture around these voices, give them the tools, give them a way to be heard, the distribution, and let's amplify other ways of thinking about the issues that we all face. Hey, how about we talk to the people that we never listen to? Girls, from where? All over the world. Like that's what this is. And that is, if that's not hopeful, I don't know what is. Now for years, ethnically diverse women have raised concerns about the lack of beauty and makeup products for people with darker skin. But now a Zimbabwean born makeup artist in Australia is pushing the industry to do more to change that. Rumba Zaim and Zengai's makeup workshops celebrate beauty of all different shades because she said what should be fun with makeup is often disheartening for women of color. I think unfortunately often we would only see one shade or one race being represented all the time that a lot, of, a lot of the times it starts to feel as though there's no place for us and I want young people to realize that there is a space for you on women of colour is because sometimes if you're not too careful, the colour will just sort of wear off. Women like Millicent Changirai 
say it's a common problem with big brand retailers, often only catering to light and medium skin tones. It definitely added to the feeling of feeling a bit isolated, a bit, I guess, unwelcome to some degree. Um, the fact that I had to go to special stores just to find my shade, and it was a bit of an inconvenience for me. Musangai is encouraging all brands to widen their product range to cater to a larger variety of skin tones. If you're going to serve someone, you need to do it all the way and you need to cater for everyone. It's really that simple, that's why you get into business. Now, live music is slowly coming back to the streets of New York City in a new pandemic-inspired way. With the city concert venue still closed, the New York Philharmonic put its world-class musicians on a track to perform on its city roads and intersections. Anne Nelson has the story narrated by Anne Wright. Check it out. Concert venues remain closed in New York due to the coronavirus pandemic. So musicians are taking their concerts to the streets while protecting against the virus. For the first time in 178 years of its existence, the New York Philharmonic is hitting the road in a truck and stopping at random places to play music. After months of staying at home, the musicians say they're happy to be playing for others. You know, seeing, I mean, seeing the frontline house worker working so hard and save people's lives and and I feel sad that I was not able to contribute. Instead, I could only be cowardly staying at home, which is a responsible thing to do. But I wish I could use my music to heal more people. This first seemed like a disaster. Now it's turned into the most creative time, I think, in many years. So what do you mean? Everybody comes up with new ideas how to make music in different places. Music and it's, it came alive. It's amazing. The time and venue of each new live concert is kept secret until the very last minute to prevent unsafe big crowds. Also to protect people, musicians play for only about 20 minutes, then pack up and move on to another part of town. Opera star Anthony Roth Costanzo, who spent the last six months cooped up at home, came up with the idea. Well, you know, there are all kinds of logistics involved, from the sound to the lights to the bathrooms. Where are we going to go? What restaurants are open? So just in case, I like to have prepared a tent and a camping toilet, but we haven't used it yet. I think we have a bet on who's going to use it first. It's all new and unfamiliar. A truck instead of a large stage, face masks on opera singers, passers-by in jeans and t-shirts instead of evening gowns and suits. There's a place for us. I haven't heard live music or heard singing like that in a very long time. And it feels surreal and it's really, really moving. I'm very grateful for like such um, high art, such extreme talent to just be on the street corner. It's very humbling. We feel so lucky that we just walked out of the store and saw this wonderful performance. What do you think? I feel like New York is going to come back. I think it's wonderful to have both the great halls and these individual connections. When we're in the Met, when we're in the New York Philharmonic, we don't see the faces, we don't see the tears in their eyes, we don't see the joy on their faces in the way we do here, and that can change how we make music. So we must have both. Some musicians predict this will soon become the Big Apple's new normal. And as they bid their goodbyes to a surprised and grateful audience, they promise to see them again perhaps on another street corner someday. For Anna Nelson in New York, NRA's Daily News. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. I want to thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Bungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voanews.com. We are also on social media. We are on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Until next time, goodbye, everyone. Uh, 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 uh.